In the headlines, President Buhari unveils redesigned 200, 500, 1,000 Naira notes. APC presidential candidate pledges to continue where President Buhari stops in 2023. 17 Lagos bound passengers burned to death in Abuja auto crash. Away from Nigeria, South African government workers protest demanding 10% increase in salaries. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Ayuba Ile. Thank you for joining. And now the details. President Muhammadu Buhari has unveiled the redesigned 200, 500, 1000 Naira note. The notes were unveiled on Wednesday before the start of the Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by President Muhammadu Buhari at the presidential villa in Abuja. While speaking, President Buhari said that the redesigning of the new Naira note will not only help the country to address the issue of illicit financial flows and corruption, but also improve the economy and the value of the Nigerian currency. The president, who said the currency redesign will also help the Central Bank of Nigeria Monetary Policy Initiative, added that the first set of currency, which was printed locally by the Nigeria Printing and Minting Company, will prevent counterfeiting of the note. He, however, appealed to Nigerians to embrace the new policy to redesign the Naira. The CBN governor, Godwin Emirfele, while briefing, warned Nigerians against holding of the old note, saying that there was no going back on the January 31st, 2023 deadline to completely render the old notes useless. The All Progressives Congress presidential candidate Bola Tinubu says that he will continue from where President Buhari stops, pledging to recharge Lake Chad if elected in 2023. Tinubu said this on Tuesday at the flag of, of the Kolmani Integrated Development Project in Bauchi State, where he noted that the project has created new opportunities for the country. He said beyond Lake Chart, he will also ensure the construction of the Mambila Hydro Project to boost power supply in the country. He had commended the president for seeing through the discovery of oil in the Kolmani field located at the boundary between Bauchi and Gombe State. Bochi State Governor Bala Mohammed's comments that the state is Buharist caught the attention of the Senate President Ahmad Lawan and Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong, who urged him to move over to the APC to ensure that Buhari's legacy are sustained. Let me assure you, if I am elected the president, I will recharge Lake Shad. I will continue to hold on to that renewed hope and carry forward where where you left the full print we are going to enlighten and sensitize the people on the importance of this project and the importance of being peaceful fortunately there is a provision for the host communities in the petroleum act signed by mr president last year another milestone that he has achieved and I would like to commend Mr. President for all his support and concern for the development and welfare of our people. It is our hope that other areas with substantial hydrocarbon deposits, like the Lake Chad Basin and the Benue Trail, will be equally explored and exploited eventually. While we are getting the resources from the oil, we should be looking at how to make the oil resources move out, develop more and more areas of the real sector where our people can be more gainfully employed to ensure continuing wealth and ensure employment for our teaming youth. In the meantime, residents of Barambu have expressed mixed feelings about the Kolmani oil drills. While it is sharing news for some, others raised fears the government may take over their cultivatable lands, saying that they have no occupation other than agriculture. 
My appeal to the two state governors of Bauchi and Gombe is to try and construct two major roads leading to Barambu village. By so doing, we understand that they show their commitment towards the oil drilling in our community for us to be developed. This one is okay for us at the moment. What we are demanding as urgent is schools and opening of the new hospitals already built in our two communities. That is our appeal. One is in Sabwan Garani and the other one is at the Gagarabani village. As youth in Barambu community, we don't know anything except agriculture, and now our land has taken over by the government. How do they want us to survive and be productive? They should give us alternative job to be engaged and sustain our lives. Moreover, kidnappers are always at large in some of our communities here, destroying our properties. Honestly, they should do the needful in Barambu community. And on political matters, the People's Democratic Party and Labour Party presidential candidates Atiku Abubakar and Peter Obi on Tuesday pledged commitment to implement a list of demands proposed by the Christian Association of Nigeria anchored on restructuring and constitutional reforms. Trust TV's Shafir Suleiman reports that the SDP presidential candidate Adewole Adebayo also appeared before the Christian body to unveil his agenda for the country. The report. Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, had last week presented its demands to the APC and the Action Alliance presidential candidates, Bola Ahmed Tunubu and Major Hamza Al Mustafa, retired. It is the turn of PDP, STP, and Labour Party presidential candidates. Responding to the demands, Atiku Abubakar says it is consistent with his covenant with Nigerians pledging to implement them if he becomes Nigeria's president. What you have presented to us is what I have always believed in. And if I have the opportunity, I swear to God I will do it. Speaking on the same platform, presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, who provided his basis for adopting the charter, assures the Christian community of his commitment to its implementation. What we need now is implementation of it. And I is committed to implementation of it. I'm not going to give a school. Presidential candidate of the Social Democratic Party, Adewale Adebayo, went memory lane on the reasons behind the creation of the religious body, which he says was to emancipate the citizens across religious divides. Khan was a defender of truth and justice. Whoever is at the receiving end, And we want that Khan, that when Khan will speak, it is not only Christians who will be listening. As a build-up to the 2023 elections, various interest and professional groups are engaging the presidential candidates in an effort to engender issue-based conversations that will shape the electoral outcome. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. The race for the Kwara Central Senatorial seat is gaining momentum with the candidates of the various parties boasting of readiness to coast to victory. The process that produced APC senatorial candidate is generating reactions as the incumbent senator who lost return ticket and winner could not agree on the credibility of the process. The report. Ever since the former Senate President Bukola Sarakel lost the debate to return to the Senate as Senator representing Quora Central, the zone has been a hotbed for contenders. The incumbent APC Senator Yahya Oluriegbe has also lost the primaries thereby losing without even contesting the election. Let me have found out what I've said remained the same. The process, according to him, was not transparent as it was meant to favor certain individual who eventually emerges. In terms of the process, the party added over the issue of primaries and everything to governors in this state. The governors decide 
as to what happened to A or B. Salim Mustafa, who eventually emerged the APC candidate, and for his aid, the process was free of any manipulation. We are going to represent the good people of Kuala Central. The former national chairmanship candidate of APC wondered why Oluregbe is still crying over spilled milk after congratulating him immediately after the primaries. The primary happened in the full glare of stakeholders, relevant stakeholders of the party. It happened in the full glare of the representative of INEC, the representative of the security agencies, and then most particularly, it happened right in the presence of the candidate, the three candidates that contested for the election themselves. If for some reasons his expectation was that he would win the primaries and he didn't win, he has taken it in good faith as a Muslim. He was the first person that wrote a congratulatory message to me and wishing me well. And just last week we were together and he gave me his words again and assured me that he has no issue with my candidature. We have decided on Labour Party. There are other candidates from other political parties jostling for the same post, especially from People's Democratic Party and Labour Party. The journalist turned politicians, Bolaji Abdullahi, a much PDP candidate, and he believes he has the wherewithal to represent Kwara Central like his boss, Bukola Saraki, while his counterpart from Labour Party says politics is not a do or die affair. I have offered to serve if it is the wish of the electorate to give me their mandate, so be it. If it is the wish of the electorate, to consider any of the other candidates, I am willing to congratulate and support whoever is giving the mandate. I'm contesting to represent Kwara Central Senatorial District because I believe that when conversation about Nigeria is taking place, I, Bolaji Abdullahi, am going to give Kwara Central one of the strongest voice on the, on the floor of the National Assembly. All eyes are now on the electorate. Who will decide who will represent Kwara Central at the Senate? There are other parties too, like NNPP and ABGA, that are also interested in the Red Chamber, and time will tell who will clinch the post. About 17 Lagos bound Gombe bus passengers were burnt to death in a fatal accident that occurred in the early hours of Tuesday near Yaba Junction along Abuja Lokoja Highway. Reports say that four among the passengers who survived the crash with degrees of burns were rushed to Abaji General Hospital for treatment by the rescue team of the Federal Safety, Corps, uh, Federal Road Safety Commission. An eyewitness, Kabiru Garba, said that the accident occurred in the morning involving an 18-seater Toyota bus with a truck with registration number BAU6382. XA. He said that the 18 bus, which was uh, coming from Abuja, Gogolada axis on speed, hit the truck from behind and went into flames instantly. He said four among the 21 passengers on board escaped while 17 others were trapped and burnt beyond recognition. When contacted, the FCT sector commander of the Federal Safety Corps, Samuel Ochi, confirmed the incident. Ochi, however, cautioned motorists, especially night travelers, against overspeeding at the peak of Hamatan season. You're watching the news update on Trust Television, coming up shortly. We'll take a look at why canoe making is thriving in Kaduna. Details of this and more after the break. Bio. This holiday season, Star Times is taking us to a better level. <laughs> You can step up your family entertainment with the Star Times Upgrade promo. You recharge two months on Nova Bouquet and get upgraded to Basic or Smart Bouquet. Recharge two months on Basic or Smart Bouquet, you get upgraded to Classic or Super Bouquet. And if you recharge two months on Classic or Super Bouquet, you get 10 days free on your subscription. This upgrade automatically qualifies you for a weekly draw to win 55-inch Smart TV, PS systems, home appliances, 
and more. These prices are proudly sponsored by Long Ridge, Weon, and Amaz. This promo is from the 15th November to 15th January 2023. Times and conditions apply. On Star Times, every day is the best day ever. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Star Times, entertain your family. Documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back from that break. Here's a recap of our top stories again. President Muhammad Buhari unveils redesigned 200, 500, and 1,000 Naira notes. Plus, APC presidential candidate pledges to continue where President Buhari stops in 2023. Now, the floods may have come and gone, but not the memories and lamentations from those affected. In Benue State, the food basket of the nation, farmers raised the alarm over imminent hunger due to the flood that ravaged the state during the 2022 rainy season. The report. When you look at this yam, it is affected by yam, uh, water. It is water that causes this. Some have been rotten. Some are get, get this beer, beer on the body. When you look at it. So when you bring them to the market, they will not put much amount on it because of uh, the affected skin. And we, if you go to our homes, you will experience a lot of yams that lots concerning this uh, flooding. So when the, the rain falls and it fails to go, those rain affect soil. It never goes, it takes a little time before the water goes. So when it takes a little time, it affects yam inside the ground. These are the cries of those in the yam chain in the Sankra Asis, largest producers of yam in Africa. No thanks to the 2022 flood disaster. They said the usual hustle and bustle in the popular Zakeban market would not be witnessed this year, as many farmers have lost their homes and farmlands in the flood. Another category, the rice farmers, also cried out. The farm here, this uh, flood, 2022, you can see level everything, about uh, three hectares. There is nothing I can get to feed because at times we do all those things to feed and then sell to other domestic uh, uh, problems. As it can happen like this, we are zero. We don't have anything in hand. I plant lies. Both of these places is mine. Then I use lies. Then I plant it. But the matter of land, this rain. Mm. So when God land, the, the rice has been perished. That's the remaining one. Starting from there to this side, this is the one that remains only. So, they also urge the government and organizations to intervene to minimize the hunger that is imminent because of the losses caused by floods. During the last rainy season, 
Hundreds of thousands of hectares of farmlands together with farm produce were washed away and destroyed in the state. Canoe making is engaging locals at Bakinkogi, a community along Kaduna River. Though prices are low, the business sustains transportation of people, foodstuffs and animals from the community to Kaduna metropolis. In this report, Bella Musa speaks to local canoe makers along the river Benue Bank and take a look. Local canoe making is a lucrative business for these young men. And according to them, though the price is not high, but the patronage is good. Okasha Omar is a local canoe maker who has been in the business for eight years with a wife and two children. Omar said he earns a living from the business. This business is good for me because I earn a living from it. And I am thankful to God. Besides earning a living, this young man said they construct the canoe to help their communities with means of transportation. People come from far to buy them for transportation of passengers and goods, so as to help the communities around us with means of transportation. Like any other human endeavor, canoe making comes with challenge, especially lack of modern equipment that will enable them to construct canoe with ease. We need machines that will help us in cutting down the wood to construct the canoes. In the past, we had boats that worked with machines, but now none of them is working. If we can get assistance from the government, it will enable us to improve on the boats. Amidst lack of jobs for the teaming youths, canoe making provides jobs for some youths in Kaduna State. Bella Musa, Cross TV News Kaduna. Delta government has debunked media reports credited to the governor of River State, Yesam Wike, that it had collected refunds from the federal government without disclosing it to citizens. Addressing journalists on the issue, the Delta Commissioner for Finance, Fidelis Tilije, said that contrary to the revelation by the River State governor, Delta had only received 14.7 billion naira in three quarterly installments of 4.9 billion naira each. According to him, the total amount due to the state from the 13% derivation arrears is 240 billion naira, out of which the federal government agreed to pay in quarterly installment for a period of five years. He added that with the agreed amounts settled, some states like Rivers approached commercial banks and discounted theirs to collect full payment. But Governor Ifan Yokoa said that he will not want to leave the next administration with a huge debt burden. The one that was due to Delta State was 240 billion. And because of the uh, chronic nature of the Nigerian economy today, as we speak, federal government could not at a go make the respective payments to all the higher producing states. And so the 240 billion that was due, or rather due to Delta State, is meant to be paid to Delta State as in the case of all other oil producing states in five years quarterly. Quarterly payment for five years. As we speak today, the government of Delta State has received 4.9 in three quarters, which gives you about 14.9 billion thereabout. The balance will be paid subsequently on a quarterly basis for five years. The COCA interchange is on. The Ugeli as an organization is still on, even without that fund. And governor in his, in, his, in his usual transparency told us last week by himself that Delta had assessed 30 billion of that money. He told us, journalists, nothing is hidden in there. Now, away from Nigeria, thousands of South African government workers took part in nationwide demonstrations on Tuesday, November 22nd, to demand a 10% increase in their salaries. Negotiations between public sector unions and the government are deadlocked. 
the government had resolved to unilaterally implement a 3% pay hike, which did not satisfy, satisfy the unions. In Pretoria, workers downed tools and marched to the offices of the National Treasury to submit their demands. Employment Minister Tulas Ngsesi, a former trade unionist, was booed by workers as he arrived to receive the memorandum of demands. The government had announced a no-work, no-pay principle for workers who took part in the demonstrations, but this did not deter them from staging demonstrations across the country's major cities. This was a second round of demonstrations after the Public Service Association, which represents over 200,000 public servants, initially declared a dispute with the government. And in sports news, France defender Lucas Hernandez has been ruled out of the rest of the World Cup because of the knee injury he picked up in the win against Australia. The 26-year-old Bayern Munich left back ruptured the anterior cruciate ligament of his right knee in the defending champions 4-1 opening game victory. Several key France players, including Real Madrid's Karim Benzema, were injured before the tournament started. Hernandez was replaced by brother Theo, who plays for AC Milan, and France recovered from going behind to take control of the Group D game. And that's a wrap on the news update. You can watch more via all our social media platforms and also watch us live on YouTube. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for watching.